M-Class is taking the sport utility vehicle market by storm. And after viewing this program, you'll join the ranks of those who believe the M-Class is truly in a league of its own. We're going to take a serious look at the M-Class and two of its competitors, the Ford Explorer, Eddie Bauer edition, and the Jeep Grand Cherokee. All three vehicles were brought together at a specially designed off-road and street course at our facility in Alabama and put through a series of highly demanding and challenging tests. The tests measured tolerances during various off-road settings and examined the vehicle's street driving capabilities. We also put the vehicles through a set of comparison tests on the issues of engine capacity, cargo space, seating, ergonomics, and ease of operation. The tests were conducted during training events held at the Mercedes-Benz Manufacturing Facility in Tuscaloosa County, Alabama. We'll cover seven main vehicle topics that will showcase the Explorer and Cherokee, then highlight the M-Class and its advantages in the same situations, then end with comments from participants or leaders at the training events. A special feature of this program will be a commentary of the M-Class by Rod Hall of Rod Hall Incorporated one of the world's foremost off-road drivers and driving instructors. Through the years, I've seen a lot of changes and have been involved with a lot of changes of this sports utility market today. Our goal is to give you, the Mercedes-Benz sales professional, the information you will need to present the M-Class to the highly discerning sport utility vehicle customers when they enter your showrooms and to translate the test data and comments on this video into real-world situations that your customers will relate to as you explain the M-Class and its many features. Obviously, you can see this is a man-made exercise. You know, and the best way to actually showcase something is go to the extreme. Now, we actually built this to our spec, and it's called, I would call it an articulation exercise where we're pulling one wheel off the ground and then we bounce it and we pull the other wheel off the ground and this is a very good demonstration in the extremes of how the M-Class has the ability to forge very difficult situations. Obviously this is a difficult situation. Now what you see down there is actually potholes in the road. And the thing that's confusing about these things is a person will drive in there with their vehicle in four-wheel drive. You might notice the tires start spinning. You see how they're spinning. Well, on a normal vehicle, that brings the vehicle to a stop. But potholes like this happen everywhere. And so people don't understand why their vehicle will not go through there when the other person does. Now that doesn't sound like a big thing, but when you think of all the roads out here that have potholes in them, that you can't speed down, you have to go slow, you have to stop, then you have to make a turn, or there's a log in the road. And when you get in those holes, that means your two-wheel drive vehicle comes to a halt. But that doesn't stop the Mercedes because it actually has four-wheel drive. Well, this is a very uh, unique exercise. And the way it works is, you can see, it's actually a 90 degree turn, and it's on a off-camber outside turn. And we have these sharp railroad ties in it, as you can see, that have very sharp abrupt angles. And the one thing you got to remember now is the fact that our students only get one lap through here. They don't get to practice like we do. They don't get the right angles. They don't get the right speed. So they have to do it just like, well, maybe this is how I'm going to do it. Well, this here is another exercise that we've designed to showcase some of the advantages of the M-Class. Now, as you look across the side there of the water hole, it's a cement entrance, you drive into the water, slowly I might add, and then as you come out the other side, it's a 40 degree bank, and it's kind of cement and rock. And then as we come over the top here, we have a 40 degree incline, and then we go up to a 45 degree incline. And as we approach the top, it's a 60 degree, straight off the other side. Again, we can do that exercise with no braking. Well, this exercise here demonstrates the braking ability of the vehicles in low range and low gear on the transmission. With a right angle, 90 degree turn, right at the bottom. So what we showcase here is the ability of the M-Class 
to come down this hill in low gear, low range, and not touch the brake pedal. This is a very aggressive track that we're demonstrating this vehicle to people that have never driven off-road before. This car has the ability to do things slow, safe, that other vehicles cannot do. To begin, let's look at the components that make up the body and frame structures of the M-Class. Well, let me show you the difference between ours and, and theirs. It has to do with the cross-section of the frame rails themselves and the fact that what we use is something called a fully boxed frame rail. That is to say, if you were to take our car and saw it in half and you looked at one of the frame rails, it would look like this. If I was to reach under the car right now on ours and reach up under, I'd grab a frame rail that was like that. What we want to show you here is on the torsion track where the car is actually on two wheels and then stepping down on the left front wheel, um, the car could actually, you could move it down here, you see it actually is on the left rear and the front right wheel. What we want to show is the torsion in the body. And as we're going to find out, the doors, you can open them easily. The big difference you're going to see in the rear tailgate, where you can open the Mercedes and you can close it. No problem at all. On the Ford, it looks like this. It looks like the letter J. I can reach under there and I can actually grab around like this. So this whole section here is missing. We hope to see a different in the body flex here in the rear. When we yeah, open the rear gate. When Ford went to this kind of a frame, they, they actually made the frame part of the suspension system. It's designed to give. So that as you're driving down the road, it flexes. You can see here, really that I almost can put my hand in here, my fingers in between, while on this side, you can see really the metal touching the uh, rear light. It's almost overlapping here. So there's really a lot of body flex in the Ford. How much does it flex, you say? Well, I'll tell you how much it flexes. Come on over and look at the dashboard here. And the first thing I want you to notice is the gap between the dashboard and the door panels. That's really wide, isn't it? Know why? Because the dashboard moves all the time. The steering wheel moves. And while you're driving, you'll feel it. And if that gap wasn't there, the doors would be banging into the dashboard, which would make noise. The interior plastic parts, or the covers, which are mounted to the sheet metal of the body itself, flex with it, and you have uh, squeaks and rattles starting very soon. What is it going to mean to you in the long run if you keep this car for a while? What's it going to mean? Squeaks, rattles, plastic pieces cracking, little things like that, right? Closing problems, rust, plastic problem. rust. rust, all that kind of stuff. Sure. So this kind of flex is not a real good thing to have designed into a car if you're going to keep it for a long time. After looking at the um, M-Class and the Ford, now we get the Jeep to look at. And same situation again here. Hey, this car's much lighter. You could swing it good. Again, it's on two wheels. The door, to show that, it's fine. There's only two other cars. There's no problem at all. Now let's have a look at the rear door again. And let's see. Do you see how it fell? To the left, whoops. It's opening fine. And let's see. I'm going to make this. There's no way. Yeah, it's already rubbing here. You can see that there's no way of this thing to close. There's a total body flex in that. That means on this side, I can put my whole hand in here. This is unbelievable. There is no separate frame on this car. Now we chose, as you know, to use a unibody for the body, but then to mount that unibody on top of a rail frame underneath it. But this is a unibody, so the unibody has to uh, withstand all the flex itself. While the 
other two cars have a little help of the frame even though as I said with the M class the body itself should be uh, very sturdy see what we do in Sindelfingen in our R&D center is we actually take the bodies and shake them and rattle them until the metal virtually falls apart fatigue I've noticed that every time I go up these stairs, it's the same conditions. I enter the event, it starts to jump, and I hold the gas steady, and it continues to grow. And by the time I get to the top, it's usually almost out of control. 1500 RPM, steady as we go. It's already started jumping, it's probably gonna to continue to jump. Now it started, now it continues, it gets worse. The rough, the rest of the way up, and there we go. Well, now we're going to take the M-Class up these stairs. We're going to do it the same way we did in the Explorer. We're going to hold 1500 RPMs as close as we can, and we're going to check out the results when we get to the top and compare the two. We're going to see that it's mostly a steady motion. It's a smooth and steady climb of the stairs. Steady on the throttle, 1500, and you're going to see that when I hold a steady throttle, it's never going to the huge movements of the car and it's never going to grow it's only going to dampen and I think the combination of the low unsprung weight of the suspension the dual control arms aluminum with the torsion bars keeps that big rocking motion dampened it never will allow it to build it softens it early and it never has a chance to build while the Eddie Bauer has a very stiff front suspension, and once it starts the movement, it mimics that movement because everything is so stiff. It doesn't dampen, it augments. As you look at this thing, too, um, it is the only one that has straight axles front and rear. That is to say, these are not independent suspension uh, units on this car. Jeep has a lot of wheel travel, but not enough to get him through that. The stability is all there, especially in heavy braking and tight turns. A lot more body roll in the other vehicles. Uh, M-Class, very precise. Steering's right there. The vehicle is very stable. It doesn't give you the bouncing sensation that solid axle cars give you. It's independent suspension gives you a good, comfortable ride. Now, you can't be going off-road for hours after, at a time and be uncomfortable. The independent suspension Disc brakes gives you the added driving ability that you need to do this off-road. Speaking as an ex-mechanic, I can tell you one of the things I've always loved about Mercedes, and none of the other cars, neither the Ford nor the Jeep have this, is this wonderful way that you can raise the hood in two positions, either the normal position, which is about as far as anyone else's goes, or when guys like me have to work on it, you can stick it all the way up like this and you have full access at everything. Another thing I'd like to point out too is the location of the battery. This is a very safe location up in front here and as we look at the Ford and the Jeep you'll see that uh, a lot of them have it right in front here which is statistically speaking of course the place where you're going to have a frontal collision with someone and um, it's not good to have high amperage uh, uh, voltage in the front of the car floating around where it can start fires and do all sorts of really bad things. This, this is a real interesting feature. As you look down in it here, you can see a pipe that goes down to the front, and that goes right to the grill by the headlight, and that's your air intake. But it doesn't just stop there, because when you go off-road later on today, you're going to see that you will actually at one point go forward a river. Now, what happens at that point in time? Well, the car's got to breathe somehow. So there is actually underneath the fender well, way up in the top here, there is a second air intake. And the air intake is hooked up to a flapper valve, which is sort of very similar to what you have on a snorkel with a little ball in it. If this guy here should plug up for any reason, it immediately switches over to this guy here. Another thing that's very impressive, and that's the power under the hood. The new V6 engine is more than responsive to carry this vehicle through the situations that it needs. And especially in low range where you do need throttle response to make it react. Because what you find is when you go out on Jeep trails, 
um, you will be going at a very slow speed, uh, probably for long periods of time. And since we fully expect that people will go off to the Arizona desert or to Death Valley, uh, we needed to provide cooling on a lot of it on the car. And so what you'll notice is a lot of attention to detail. One of the really nice things that it has is three separate fans to cool the engine. And you'll notice there are two electrics on the front that cover virtually the entire radiator assembly here. And then, of course, an engine-driven fan also, which is viscous coupled so that it only kicks in when you absolutely need it uh, to cool the engine. 1500 RPM that goes up and down everything and comes on home. The uh, ML320's engine is definitely the strongest, smoothest shifting transmission also. It just shipped once and it's going to shift again. It just shifted again and you can't even feel it. The articulation here, he'll be the same as the Ford, but he'll, his tires I'll stay on the ground. See, they're still on the ground, still on the Now they're coming up. Same thing. No amount of RPM will pull him out. He has to back up and hit it a lot harder. What he does is he holds it at about a 1,600 RPMs steady. Not a whole bunch. And you don't touch the brake, just hold it at a steady 1,600 RPMs. The wheels lock up, and right there, it pulls you right on and over, nice and smooth. So right now, we're actually experiencing four ETS. It's shifting the torque and the power to the wheels that have traction, and even though two wheels were actually hanging in the air just then, it shifted the power to the other two, and we came right through it. And you probably didn't even know we were having a traction difficulty. Now the Ford and the Jeep don't have that ability. That's where the power goes, right there. You don't move anywhere. The M-Class gets the power and you drive forwards. When your wheels would start to spin, how it locks in, that's the ETS. And it, it, so it slows down those wheels so you just don't spin. Just incredible traction. The ETS, you can feel it switching the power between the wheels, locking it up. You never have to touch the brakes on a downgrade. The uh, four-wheel ETS system does exactly what it's designed to do and pulls you out of places that uh, these other ones would just be totally stuck. Yesterday was the heaviest rainfall we've had in a long time, and we just happened to be on the course, everybody together. And we did the lane changes, and it was phenomenal with the uh, ML320, but when we got into the... Explorer and the other one is not very good. They were kind of like going all over the place. And you, it was hard to believe it was a four-wheel drive vehicle. One time around the instructor just tried to make it slide a little bit and couldn't even, uh, I and mean, it was just grabbing the road. Now that I have been around this track and I see what the capabilities are, it is probably the most impressive vehicle I have driven in its class and its size for a production vehicle. It is truly an off-road vehicle as opposed to some of the people that say they are, that really aren't. We're, we're amazed at the vehicle that it can do these degrees of inclines and, and the holes, the potholes, and it shouldn't happen, but it does. Watch his turn. He can't make this turn. He'll have to make a two-point turn out of this. What that means, he'll have to back up and do it again. Otherwise, he would hit that rock in front of him. In the tight radius turns, there's this feeling in the Explorer when you drive it, there's a lot of body movement over chassis. Listen to the wheels crunch, crunch, crunch. That's called gear buying. The steering wheel is doing the same thing. It's going, it's gear buying. Very uncomfortable. He has to make a two-point turn out of the same turn. There's no wheel bind and he makes the complete turn without backing up. It was very comfortable. It felt very safe, very smooth, easy for me, like as a small person. The you know handling on the tight curves was uh, a lot easier for me. I didn't feel like the wheel was going to bounce back at me. It has a very short turning rate. That's important, really important when you're out here in the sticks or you're driving around a track that you gotta put the vehicle exactly where you want it to make the turn. When you're in the woods and you haven't been down this road and you gotta make this right hand turn off camera downhill, you have to have the short turning radius to make the turn. 
less overcorrection on the steering wheel, especially compared with the Jeep. It was bouncing all over the place. It didn't feel like when we were going through some of the rough areas that you had as much control over the car. It's undescribable. You have to experience it, is the best thing I can tell you. Floor and the Jeep both drive like trucks. This car drives like a, like a car. We drove uh, other cars earlier today, uh, a Ford and a Jeep, and uh, being the passenger on a lot less terrain than this was uh, was pretty tough. The seats in the back of the uh, M class or the M class are much more supportive for rear passengers. I felt a lot of more, a lot more body lean on the uh, on the uh, Ford Explorer. Uh, when you hit the bumps, you're kind of like bouncing in the seats back there much more stable, much more in control with the M-Class car, much more comfortable. Uh, it's a much more supportive seat. There's enough leg room, I have enough foot room. I have big feet <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of room for that. The interior feels fabulous. It really feels like you can see and, you know, move around in the car. Well, I think it was easier to get in and out of the M-Class vehicle. The Jeep was a little hard for me to get in and out of. And I guess the Ford was okay. I think it had a ledge to step on. What I liked about it is I'm not a tall person, I'm a short person. It's easy entry and exit. Uh, a lot of headroom, great visibility for a short person. You can see the fenders, you can make your turns. Uh, it's a typical Mercedes. You're trying to get in the car, and you already have a tiny little entryway to get into. Yes. So even if you want to, yes. you want to get your foot up here, it's real kind of uncomfortable to get your other leg back up. And there's there something also. really curious where you just put your foot there. Uh huh. Right here it says no step. Yeah. <laughs> there's just no room so for it. So it's a step rail, but they tell you not to step on it. There. I think the step rail's there for looks alone. I don't. I don't think it really has anything to do with convenience. And sometimes when you look at some of the other cars, the competition, they look like Christmas gifts. They're wrapped very nicely. You're disappointed sometimes after you take the paper off and get it's a big empty box, but it sure looks nice when you see the package under the tree. It actually feels like an automobile, but with a lot of space on the inside. And as we can see here when we look in here, this is huge. It's an amazingly large car. It's, it's inside, the capacity is similar to a lot of the, the short wheelbase minivans that are out there. So we made it on that. We also have an awful lot of room here to load, but the real story is right here. Now, as we look at this one, you can see that we're looking at we're looking at about 38 inches of load height, going from the deck all the way up to the clearance area up here at the top. We looked before, and I showed you that there was 38 inches um, on our car of clearance getting into it. And as you look at this one here, you'll see that we're actually looking at about 33 and a half inches right now on this one of clearance and that's with using the, the full-size spare. The big problem that we have with the spare tire in the Jeep is that it lives in the car. And the problem with that has been shown once again when we took our cubic foot boxes and tried to put them in the Jeep. Though you can try anything that you want to, as you look at it, you will see that all that you can get in there is between eight to 10 boxes. Um, we've had people try everything they can think of to get them in. And when we think about the life of a car and how often you, you have flats on a car, you're paying a very hefty price for having this inside the car. And once again, when we look at the load height on this particular car, you'll see that we're talking about 33 and 3 quarters or so. And again, we were four inches taller than that. This is a Mercedes. It has all the Mercedes safety features. And it feels like it's made out of one solid piece, like all Mercedes. Very solid, very safe feel to it. You know, uh, The Jeep was all over the road. And Another thing, too, did anybody notice that it has three headrests? The guy in the middle has a headrest. No one else did. And one thing that we were surprised to find is that the headrest, these are in their lowermost position right now. And you can see there's still, except for you, there's still ample, ample head support there. Um, the Ford, on its highest position, is at the point where this is on its lowest position. You know, another thing that's very unique about the M-Class is the ability to see out the windshield. You don't have the hood coming out and drop it off. You can see right over the windshield, right down to the ground. So when you're going off the hill and you're trying to make this right-hand turn that you can't hardly see, you can see with the M-Class, with the other cars, you're kind of guessing where you're at. In this car, you're feeling control immediately. First of all, the visibility is so good. It's dramatically different on the uh, slope of the hood. I know I can stop us anywhere I want to stop. I felt much more comfortable driving. I felt safer. 
any control. Well, when I came to uh, Tuscaloosa to become involved in the M class, and I took my first ride around the paved road, I'm saying, geez, I wonder what kind of four-wheel drive vehicle this could be. Well, after spending uh, several weeks, lots of time in the M class, I can tell you as I sit on this rock, it's a very impressive off-road four-wheel drive vehicle. Word is already spreading about the M-Class and its tremendous capabilities. We've set out to design a vehicle that would change an entire segment of the automobile industry. We believe we've found that vehicle in the M-Class. The SUV market is really an untapped resource for us to introduce the Mercedes-Benz line to an entirely new market demographic. We've conducted research, studied other manufacturers' models, and paired that information with the traditions of Mercedes-Benz and developed what we believe will become the leader in the SUV market. We would like to leave you with a few parting comments from sales professionals that attended the training events. The atmosphere surrounding M-Class is electric. We hope this program will put you on the high road to sales success. Unbelievable. Awesome. We can go sell these now. <laughs> it is absolutely awesome. Wild. That's just absolutely wild. It's just amazing compared to the ones that I thought were good. You know, the Explorer, Charity. This is no comparison. I'm from Iowa. We have a problem with traction in the wintertime. So this now gives that person who has the Jeep or the Ford Explorer in the garage for wintertime purposes the same manufacturer's vehicle that he's driving his S-Class, his SL, his E320. He now has the capability of buying a vehicle that's price competitive, has all the safety features, has all the technology right there. I uh, should have known better, but a, a real sense that it couldn't possibly be as good as I'd heard. And the reality is that it's not only as good, it, it exceeds my expectations. Well, I, I have a, a, a Explorer in. I didn't think it was that bad until I drove the M-Class. So it's a big difference. Quite a combination of sports utility vehicle and Mercedes-Benz handling. It's, I've never, never experienced it before. It's quite a big Very impressed. I've been selling cars for 28 years. Never had many cars impress me. This is a serious piece of equipment. This is not a modification of something or an, an attempt at something. This is serious business. I keep being amazed by uh, Mercedes coming up with this vehicle. It's going to do very well. I'll definitely go back to the dealership and promote the product with full confidence. It's unbelievable for a sport utility vehicle. It's unbelievable for any car. For a sport utility, it's really spectacular. There is a real translation to the real world. Not that you would necessarily go looking for circumstances like this, but you might find yourself in a situation where you were there not by choice, but by chance, mother nature, or whatever. Under those circumstances, this would be a tremendous advantage, and that certainly can be told to potential clients.